Welcome everyone uh, to this rainy Thursday. Hope you're doing okay. We're going to do a Rashi in the fifth Aliyah. We're transitioning, continuing to go forward in Vayikra. We talked about the Korban Ola. We talked about the Korban Mincha. Uh, we talked about the Korban Shlamim yesterday, the first three Korbanos of the Parsha. And that's like one chunk. That's one section. Rishon, Shani, Shlishi, Ravi. All about voluntary korbanos. Each of those is voluntary and brought for different reasons under different circumstances. Yesterday we compared them to the korban pesach, which has elements of all three but is distinctive uh, from them. In our aliyah today, we transition to the obligatory korbanos, the first of the obligatory korbanos, and that is the korban chatas, the sin offering. And um, there are many types of sin offerings that are brought. Our aliyah has, you know, four of them, five of them. Uh, the next aliyah has some more. So there's many different types that are brought by different people in different circumstances and uh, different kinds of animals. But the basic gist of a korban chatas is that it's only brought by a person who violates certain kinds of mitzvos and does so bishogeg, accidentally. A person who purposefully violates one of these particular mitzvahs. Again, it has to be a love and it has to be um, various parameters to it. Um, if they do it purposefully, there is no atonement that can be achieved through a korban chatos. Korban chatos is only brought by someone who, um, who violates it, the shogeg. So as the aliyah opens, various types of people are singled out in terms of bringing this korban chatos. The first is nefesh kitachta bishkaga, just the generic, if any person, any nefesh, any human, any soul, violates one of these commandments, bishkaga, right over here it's emphasized. So this is what he would have to bring. Then it goes to particular individuals, specifically leaders. Im ha-kohen ha-mashiach yachta. What happens if the kohen ha-mashiach, the anointed kohen, the kohen gadol of that time, of that generation, sins in this way, the exact same way as a commoner would sin, so to speak, but there would be different parameters for what he is supposed to bring because of his stature and because of his leadership. Uh, then going further, after the kohen ha-mashiach, we have the im kol ada Israel yishku. What if the whole Jewish people sins? Now, the way the whole Jewish people would sin uniformly is if the Beis Din Haggadol issued a ruling, a psaq, was which was erroneous. If that was the case, then everybody would be following that psaq and it would be wrong, and that would be discovered, and all major stilgas in the Gemara about how to figure out what this means. But um, if they would discover that they were wrong, everybody would have been following the practice only because of them, then there's a special korban brought by them. Again, um, this is kol adas Yisrael, uh, is the name attributed to the Sanhedrin Haggadol because it represents Kol Adas Yisrael. It's the body that's the representation of all of Kla Yisrael. So if they do something wrong, if they make a mistake in Psach, then there's a special korban that they bring. And finally, we get to the one that I wanted to get to today in our Aliyah, which is Asher Nasi Yechta. If the king, if the leader, the, the, the president, so to speak, in this case, it means a king, Asher Nasi Yechta, uh, if the king sins, he has to bring a korban as well. Um, which is a little bit different than the commoner. So the first thing to, to note over here is that in all the other instances that we mentioned, it's all a possibility that a person sins. Nefesh ki techta, if a person would sin. Im hakohen amashiach yachta, if the kohen gadol sins. Im koladat Israel yishku ve'im. If the whole Sanhedrin makes a mistake. They're all if, if, if. When you get to the fourth category over here of the Nasi, of the Melech, it's Asher Nasi Yechta, when the king sins. Not if the king sins, but when the king sins. The simple understanding of the transition from Im, Im, Im to Asher is like the Sforno, I believe, says. Others say that uh, uh, it's more likely that a leader like a king is going to mess up it's more chances of messing up when you're in a position of leadership because there's many more things that can go wrong. You have much more on your shoulders. You're responsible for more things. And therefore it's almost a given that the Nasi is going to sin. The only question is how that Nasi will react. Rashi doesn't quite go in that direction, although I don't think he negates that. I think that's a given for Rashi, that the usher here is telling us that it's, the Nasi is bound to sin. But Rashi says there's another, another meaning to Asher, which is not when, but Lashon Ashrei. It's similar to the language of Ashrei. We would read it as Ashrei Nasi Yechta. Happy is, or lucky is, or fortunate is the one where the Nasi sins. What do you mean it's fortunate where the Nasi sins? No, it's not fortunate when the Nasi sins, but given that it's a given that the Nasi is going to sin, then Ashrei, fortunate, is the one who is going to bring the right korban to atone for it. 
Ashrei hador shanasi shelo notein lev lahavi kapar al shigagaso kavachomer shemischared al donosav. Fortunate is the generation that has a prince, that has a king who is so noble, so moral, so upright, that when they do mess up, they're willing to own up to it. They're willing to atone for it. They're willing to do what's right in the spiritual realm to co correct that mistake in which they made. So putting the two explanations together, we'd say, because it's a given that a Nasi is going to sin, and because it's a given that power corrupts, therefore, Asher, Ashrei, Fortunate is the generation where the Nasi who sins, the Asachas Mikomis is Hashem of Kachosh of the Son of Hashem, Ahod Alav Chatasso, the Samach Yado, goes through all of these steps of bringing the Korban and putting his hands on it and atoning for his sins. Fortunate is the generation that has such leaders. It's both a beautiful Rashi and a bit of a sad Rashi. The sad reality is that as you take on more responsibility, you have more chances of sinning. The sad reality is as you go up the leadership totem pole, there's more chances for corruption and more chances for blindness to your mistakes and more chances that you're unable, unable to admit to your mistakes. But it's beautiful as well, uh, teaching us that there certainly are leaders and there are generations that are fortunate to have such great leaders that they are able to do the right things in the eyes of human beings and in, right, in the eyes of uh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu as well. Much more to say about this, including what the Nasi brings as opposed to the individual. They both bring growth. One brings a male goat, one brings a female goat. So some differences between them, uh, trying to understand what exactly um, is the significance of those differences and why the Nasi is specifically singled out for a different kind of animal and what the symbolism of that is. So much more to say. But for the moment, I wanted to just focus on the idea of Ashrei, fortunate is the generation. Hopefully, we should all be fortunate to have generations of wonderful leaders to lead us and to be role models for us and to represent us before Hashem as well. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Have a good one, everybody. Take care.